Well, we're going to start today by looking back on what we did yesterday as a bit of a reminder from the extend task from yesterday. Um, and then, yesterday we were looking at making numbers using hundreds and tens and ones counters. Well, today we're going to look at using numbers where we place counters in uh, columns for ones and tens and hundreds. And it leads into one of my favourite problem solving tasks for you to have a go at, where you've got to find all the possible answers. Uh, so really, really looking forward to today. So we shall start with a little recap from yesterday. We were looking at different ways of making numbers uh, with tens and in ones and in hundreds. Um, so here, have a look at these examples. True or false for these uh, four possibilities. Is it 34? Pause the video and have a go. And let's have a look. Um, well, this one isn't 34 here because I've only got ones. I've got seven ones. That's not 34. It, it could, we could think it is if we think this is representing columns three, but that, of course, isn't 30. It's just three. Um, this one is 34 because I've got one, two, three tens and four ones. So that one is 34 here. This one here isn't 34. Um, the tens and the ones have been put the other way around than they would normally be shown, but we've got 43, four tens and three ones. Um, and this one, this is 34 here, because I've got 10, 20, I've got 30, if I add up those ones there, and for 34. Have a look at the next one. True or false for these three examples? Are they showing 321? Pause the video and have a look at those. And when you're ready, let's unpick them. So here, we've got 300s two tens and a one, so you get 321. Um, what about here? Now, this one is 231. Um, and in this one, I've got 300s. Oh, I don't seem to have enough tens. I've only got one ten. Oh, but no, look, these ten ones is another ten. So I've got ten and another ten there. So that is 20. And then I've got that one. So yes, that one is 321. Um, we're going to look at today a slightly different challenge about making numbers. It's called Numbers in Columns, and we're going to have a look at how we're going to represent three different numbers in a slightly different way. Now, there was a tool that used to be used a lot in maths to, to show this, an abacus with hundreds and tens and ones, which we don't normally use anymore, but we're going to use that same skill, so it would be like walking back in time. Let's have a little, little look at how it is put together. So you're most likely to see numbers being built in this way. So let's say here, I could say I have 312. And in 312, what do I have? I've got 300s, I've got 110, and I've got two ones. Now I could represent that number. Another way it can be shown is using this system where we just put counters in to show how many hundreds and how many tens and how many ones. Now. We really have to understand place value well to, to, to make sense of this because this looks very much like six. It's just six counters. Whereas here, it's easier to see that these counters represent a different thing because there is a hundred written on here and there's 10 written on here and there's one written on here. The, the difference is these counters, I could tell the value wherever they're placed. Um, with this circle being the hundreds, that's how I recognize that they are actually a hundred in this representation. Um, so let's take them off here. Let's create a different number and see how we can make it with coins. Um, let's say we go for uh, this. And I could say, okay, so what number's been made there? Well, there are, it is 200 and 3. And there aren't any, uh, any tens. Now, how would I write that? Of course, I would have to write that one. Let's see where I can fit that in as 203. And I need to write that zero in there um, just to make sure that the two and the three, uh, the two hundreds and the three ones are in the right column. So that zero is really important. Um, and again, let's just see if we can have a go at, at making another one. Um, so this time, and again, tell the screen what number I have made this time. So what number are you looking at there? Well, you are looking at 120. 32. So we're going to build on this understanding now. So for this task, three digit numbers are made by putting counters in the hundreds, tens or ones columns, just like we've seen really. 
So here, in this example, this is 241, the, the way that I've made this number, and it's been made with seven counters. So this is an example for us. Um, now, I know you won't exactly be able to draw them on, but see if you can imagine the drawing here and fill this in. So for this number, what is the number and how many counters is it made with? And so here, I'm going to draw on 537. What's that going to look like? Can you show that? Um, and how many counters is that made with? Uh, pause the video and have a go. And let's have a little look. Um, so the left hand example, well it's 416. And how many counters? It's made with 11 counters. Six there, four there and another one here. Now what will 537 look like when shown in this way? Uh, five hundreds, three tens and seven uh, ones. And that in total is 15 counters. I work that out by doing the 7, add the 3, and then add the 5, 15 in total. Okay, so here's your main task that we're going to work through. And the challenge is finding all the different possible answers. So I wonder if you can get there. So for this task, three digit numbers are made by putting counters in the hundreds, tens, or ones columns, just like we've been doing. So here's another example. But look, this one's slightly different. So this is 305. It's made with eight counters. So this is a three digit number, but you notice there aren't any tens, so my number is 305, but it's still a three digit number because I've got hundreds. How many three digit numbers can be made using four counters though? That's your challenge. This isn't an answer to that. This one has eight counters. It's just an example. But how many different three digit numbers can be made using four counters? So what's the smallest number that can be made? And what's the largest number that can be made? And how many answers can you find? So here is your problem solving task today. Pause the video and you get stuck right into it. So let's have a look at all of the numbers that I can make with four coins. Now I'm going to start off with the smallest one that I can possibly make. I can't just put four coins in here or all my coins in here or here because then it wouldn't be a three digit number. So I'm going to put one in the hundreds and then what I could, I could also put three in the uh, ones, none in the tens, and I've got 103. Um, now, how else could I make a number that starts with 100? Are, are there any other ways? Yeah, I could have 112. Um, any other ways? 121. Any others? Yeah, I could have 130. Um, now, what about from now? Um, I, could, I could have 200, um, two in the hundreds. And so that leaves me with two other counters. So two in the hundreds, I could have two in the ones. I'm going for my next smallest. Um, and from there, I could have 211. Any others with, uh, with two hundreds? Yeah, I could have 220. And that, again, is still a three-digit number. And we put this zero, of course, here, at what we call it as a placeholder, so I can still see that this is hundreds and this is tens in this, in this number here. Um, now, what about three in the hundreds? 301? Um, it could be that I have 310. Now there is another one, the largest one that I can make. If I put all counters in the hundreds, then there we go, 400. So how many different possible answers there? Actually, there's 10. You know, for once, yesterday, I didn't actually say this. To find today's tasks, click on the blue link underneath the video. Um, and again, it's just the extend task. It looks very, very short, but there's lots to it, like all great problem solving tasks. So have a look at this one. Make a number that's closest to 500 by placing 16 counters in the hundreds, tens, or ones column. So what is that number that is closest to 500? Uh, again, I'd love to see, can you think of your own version of this kind of question as well? Uh, you could design that and send it through. The answers are at the bottom. We are going to continue this stretch into problem solving tomorrow and I'm going to see you then.